let's get to the real show here, Matt. Let's get to the Buffalo Bills in this week one Monday night football matchup. Uh, do you want to start on offense or defense? I'll let you take the first point. You could take either side of the ball. Hit me with it. Uh, let's just start with offense. Uh, just because I think that's the, the area where uh, it's a little bit more unsure of. Uh, I think we are very confident that uh, we're going to see a defense. Uh, if we listen to DJ to, to read, uh, he's saying that they're going to be on the same level as the the eighty five Bears, I believe he said. Uh, so eighty five, eighty six <laughs> Bears, both years. Eighty five, eighty six Bears. So uh, I'm I'm let's, let's start with the side that we're a little bit uh, less uh, uh, confident in. Uh, so. I'm going to start with uh, the offensive line and who they're going to be going up against. We got Greg Rousseau, uh, Daquan Jones, Ed Oliver, and Leonard Floyd going up against our offensive line, who we haven't seen a lot of uh, until the very end of of preseason. Uh, I think they looked a lot better uh, with the starters out there. Of course, we saw them against the Giants backups. Um, But I have a little bit more confidence that they can be a solid group. Uh, we haven't seen Brown yet, but if he's even close to what he was like last year with his, uh, injury, I think he'll be okay. Uh, so when it comes to matchup, I am worried about Floyd against Becton and Rousseau against Brown, uh, because I feel like they're going to want to test Brown's strength and Rousseau is strength and speed. He's a little bit of everything. So I think that is going to be their best bet with Rousseau on the left side against Brown. And then they're going to want to put speed against Becton, uh, which he's shown that he's had trouble with. Uh, so Floyd is an obvious choice to be uh, the guy, the primary guy lining up against him when pass rushing. Uh, I think that the best way we can kind of neutralize them is run the ball at Floyd, have Becton steamrolling Floyd as much as possible. Take advantage of that size difference. Take a, advantage of that strength dis- difference. Uh, run it that way. Run it often. Have him and AVT just kind of paving the way. Uh, because I would say that's probably the the easiest route. Uh, when it comes to Ed Oliver against our interior guys, that's yet to be seen. I, I don't know what which Lakin we're going to see. I don't know which Connor McGovern we're going to see. Uh, so. I'm kind of hoping that they've all improved uh, to the point where uh, we can, you know, show up against Ed Oliver and and that interior crew. Uh, do you remember if Ed Oliver uh, was playing in that game we won last year? I I don't uh, remember. I I, I know well Vaughn, off the top of my head, but let me let me check. That was week well, nine, well, well, correct? Che- yeah, well, you check that. I'm mean, I'm just remember us being able to run the ball very well against this defensive front. Yes, it was without Von Miller, but guess what? We're not they're not gonna have Von Miller this week either. So I am confident that if if it's pretty much the same as it was last year, uh or even, I think running the ball, especially now that we have Cook, especially now that we have Hall, I think that is our best bet to kind of, you know, set the tone, kind of get them where we want them, make them put a little bit more emphasis on the box, stack it a little bit more. Uh, you, they have some great safeties with Hyde and Poyer. Maybe they throw them in the box a little bit more uh, to kind of counter our unstoppable run attack with Hall and Cook. Uh, and that will only pay dividends on the back end. Uh, we will see White, Davis White, going up against probably uh, 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 Garrett Wilson all, all game. Um, actually, do you know if the Bills uh, transfer uh, sides that the, the they White usually follow. don't. They, they usually, usually don't. don't. So you know what? That kind of allows us to get a little creative. Maybe put uh, Wilson in the slot some more. Uh, get him some favorable matchups against uh, Teron Johnson, um, and or move him to Tyre Elam's side uh, a little bit more. Uh, that will sure to to open him up, especially if he has some tough sledding against White, which I'm sure he will, because White is still a great cornerback. Uh, and I think that Wilson against White uh, will probably uh, draw a lot of wins on each side. Uh, I think Wilson will have his, and White will have his as well. Um, 
so yeah, it's all about getting everybody in favorable uh, matchup. So you know what? Let's throw why not uh, Harmon and on the outside on uh, White side sometimes uh, have him respect his Hartman's speed uh, and kind of open up things behind them uh, or in the middle with uh, Conklin and with Cobb or whoever's in the slot or Wilson if he's in the slot uh, Lazard if he's in the slot I think the slot is going to eat in this game uh, I think running back coming out of the backfield uh, as receivers are going to eat yes. this game uh, so I just want to attack them attack them attack them first up front with the run game and then just pound them in the the middle and in the the, the flat uh, with uh, our tight ends and, and running backs. I think that's where we're going to see the most success on offense. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Uh, when I get to my offensive points, uh, you're going to hear a lot of the same stuff from me that you echoed. Um, to start, normally I am the type of person that likes to throw to set up the run, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. That show off the threat of your passing game, threaten vertically, show that you're not scared to go deep and back those safeties off before you start trying to hammer the ball into nine man boxes and say, well, we're going to run the ball. So you have to respect it when they're already loading the box. That never made sense to me. This is a game. I think it's the opposite. This is a game where I think you have to, you have to prove that you can run the ball, prove that you can win up front, prove that you, you can't let the bills sit in their two high shells that they want to do and have to bring an extra man in the box or, or, or bring a safety down or however they're going to decide to do it, you have to make them change their base look. You have to make them respect the threat of the run game, and that will help open up the passing game as a result. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say, I got your answer, by the way. Ed Oliver did play in Week 9, um, from all that yeah. I can tell. However, Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde didn't. Milano? And did Milano play? Milano was questionable, but I do think he played. Okay. Uh, I didn't 100% check on that as I'm looking at the injury report, and I saw that Oliver was not listed at all. Um, so I'm a 99% sure he played. Hoyer was out. Micah Hyde was out already and then lost for the rest of the season, um, I believe, before that Jets game. Um, Milano was listed as questionable, but if my memory serves correct, I believe he did play. Make no oh, mistake what? about it. Everybody, sorry. To, Von Miller to did play. Cut you off. Von, <laughs> Von Miller did play. Von Miller did play. Um, Von Miller did play. That is true. And he won't be playing week one because he is on the pup and he has to be out until week five. Um, but we need to be, I need everybody to be real here, real quick. Um, I know the Jets beat the Bills last year with Zach Wilson at quarterback and, and they played a great game and Josh Allen did not. And their defense did what they had to do. And the offense made plays when it counts and was able to run the ball at the end of the game down the field and secure a lead and hold on to it. Bryce Huff gets the strip sack. All of that was awesome. This Bills team went 13 and three last year. They were number two in points and number two in yards on offense. They were number two in points defensively and number six in yards defensively. This is a very, very good team. This team is incredibly good and incredibly talented and has been for the last few years. And just because we saw that the Jets were capable of beating them with a argument sake worst team, the Bills also had key guys they were missing. And this is still a really, really good football team that deserves to be, if not outright feared, then certainly not overlooked. And I've seen, uh, you know, a lot of people thinking it's Rogers. We got Rogers this week one. They're going to be wearing the throwbacks. MetLife's going to be crazy. And, you know, that we beat them last year with Zach Wilson. This is going to be a breeze. No, it's not. No, it's not. This is a very, very tough game. This is a game that's going to decide the rest of the Jets season. It's going to have implications all year because if the Jets are fighting for their division, they're going to be fighting with Buffalo more than likely. To, to get to the offense, to, to, to get over the, the daunting, you know, overcast that is this Buffalo team. You said it, Matt. You got to start up front. You got to be able to run the ball because when I look at this team and I look at their defense, I see a lot more opportunity in the front seven than the back seven. I think the Jets have enough talent on the offensive line and have enough variance in their run game on top of that to be able to generate some yards up front running the ball. I think you can take advantage of Leonard Floyd on Mekhi Beckton, like you said, let him kick out, let him 
you know, let Floyd try and get upfield on a rush and Becton can just toss him out the club and open up a lane to the right side. I, I think there's some some value to be had there. I think you have an offensive coordinator in Nathaniel Hackett that can vary his run schemes enough to attack this front where it's not just going to be outside zone. It's not just going to be split zone on first down with CJ cracking back and letting the unblocked end get in for no gain. You know, there's there's going to be more here. You're going to see some counter. You're going to see some power. You're going to see some duo. You're going to see other concepts that are going to be hard for the one position group that I think you win this game by attacking the Bills linebackers to have to deal with. Matt Milano is a great player. We know that already. We don't know what it's like when he's the the main dog that has to handle everything on that defense from a linebacker position because Tremaine Edmonds is not there anymore. He left for Chicago in free agency. Their draft pick uh, in the mid-rounds, I believe in the second round, Dorian Williams, linebacker out of Tulane, very talented player, good athlete. You know, uh, not nothing against him, but he's still a rookie. He's also injured right now. And there's a question he's listed officially as questionable as of right now. We're waiting for the first actual injury report before the game uh, in here in a short few days after these practices go through. So we'll see what that status is when that comes out. But as of right now, from what I can tell, he's questionable for the game at all. There is not much uh, on this Bill's depth chart at linebacker besides Matt Milano. It was going to be Dorian Williams as his help. Without Dorian Williams, it's Tyler Matikavich and Tyrell Dodson. I think you can attack these guys and and Terrell Bernard. Not a lot of talent. Not a a wide ranging Mm -hmm. amount of of scary players to have to worry about. And when you have guys like Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook and Tyler Conklin and CJ Uzama and Jeremy Ruckert, you can attack these guys in space. You can isolate them, even though the Bills like to play a little more zone coverage. You get Dalvin Cook running a little check. option route right in front of the linebacker. He runs right upfield, runs basically a curl out of the backfield, and if the linebacker is leveraged on top of him, he either breaks out. If the linebacker is leveraged in front of him, he can go upfield. If he's on his left side and cut to the right, on his right side, he cuts to the left. Just take advantage of whatever leverage is there. Rodgers is going to know how to throw it. It's not like that's something Rodgers doesn't know how to do. You let Cook isolate a linebacker in space, pick his poison, boom, seven yards, first down. Cool. Once you get the run game going and you make them have to come downhill and then threaten and play action, then, like you said, put Garrett Wilson in the slot. You go right over the back of their heads with a crosser to Garrett Wilson. 17 yards, first down. Let's do it again. The strength of this Bills defense is their secondary. They're going to have Jordan Poyer back. They're going to have Micah Hyde back. They still have Tredavious White. They still have Dane Jackson, who played 15 games for them last year at corner. They still have Taron Johnson in the slot, who was their star corner in the slot. And they still have Kyrie Elam, their first round pick from last year. This defense is legit, especially in the secondary. Oh, by the way, they signed Taylor Rapp in free agency as just an extra safety to have to, in case one of their guys goes down. That's a solid player in his own right. If I want to beat this Bills defense, I'm not going at their secondary. I'm going at their interior. I'm going at their linebackers. I'm going at their weakest link. And, and I will beat the Bills the way teams beat the Jets last year on defense. Dink and dunk. Who can, okay, you got Sauce and DJ Reed out there, and they're going to smother anybody on the outside? Well, I'm not going to bother throwing at them. I'll pick on Quincy Williams in space with screens all the way down the field. I'll make CJ Mosley cover my tight end with hope that he can do it. You know, we'll pick on Jordan Whitehead isolated one-on-one in man coverage. We'll mm-hmm. find ways yeah. to, to generate yards without having to go with this secondary and go to the outside or go deep. And I think you just beat the Bills the same way teams beat the Jets. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh... I yeah, especially in the middle with the linebackers. I think if we can p- pick on them the most, uh, if we go in those pony sets uh, with Paul and with uh, with Cook, uh, pick your poison. <laughs> like let, let's see who who are they. There, there's going to be a matchup there somewhere that we can take advantage of, whether it's with the running backs, the tight ends, or or the slot. It's going to open up, and Rogers is somebody we can have confidence in. He'll find his guy. He'll find the guy that he wants to get to. He'll find the matchup, uh, and he'll take advantage of it. But first and foremost, establish that run. Set the tone, uh, and just let Rodgers do his thing on the back end. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. For, for me, it's as simple as this. Which matchup sounds better, Randall Cobb on Taron Johnson or Dalvin Cook on Tyler Matikavich? Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, 
right? It doesn't need to be. Sometimes football is simple, guys. Like sometimes it's easy. Sometimes you just have to like when it's fine, put your best players in good positions and find good matchups. Sometimes it's not that hard. Uh, and I really think this is a case uh, where that absolutely is uh, is the opportunity. Um, switching over to the defense, uh, I want to talk about defending this Bills offense um, and, and the best way that I think to do it. And Matt, I want to get your opinion on this as well. But mm-hmm. I think you treat Stefan Diggs the exact same way Bill Belichick would. And you let DJ Reed and Tony Adams bracket him all game. And you let Sauce Gardner shut down whoever's on the other side one-on-one. Because after Stephon Diggs, I, I don't know if you've seen the Bills receiving core. It's it, for people okay, that are worried babe. about the Jets. Right. For people that are worried about the Jets not having good receivers. Have you looked at the Bills roster? Have you seen what other teams are trotting out with star quarterbacks that they have too? You have Stephon Diggs, all pro player. Absolutely fantastic. One of the best receivers in the league. You want to compare directly to the Jets. You have Garrett Wilson. Offensive rookie of the year, 1,100 yards with four bad quarterbacks, likely going to be an all pro at some point in his career. Another really good receiver. Number two, Gabe Davis, like you mentioned, a solid number two. I don't think he's a bad player at all, but I don't think anybody sitting here going Gabe Davis is a uh, one of the 20 best receivers in the NFL uh, or, or within close to that range. A good number two, but not an incredible one. Flip over to the Jets. You have Alan Lazard again. I think a good number two. Don't think anyone would say Lazard's a top twenty receiver, but a solid number two option. If he's your number one guy, you could do a lot better, but not a bad as a number two option. Moving down the depth chart, Khalil Shakir, uh, Shakir, uh, Shakir, I believe Khalil Shakir. Excuse me. Um, Mid round pick from a couple years ago out of Boise State. Solid player, good route runner, good catch radius. Still waiting to have the absolute breakout. This will be, I believe he was a rookie last year, so this should be year two for him. We'll see how he can do in year two, but an unknown at this point. And after him, in terms of healthy receivers that are not on IR, you have Deontay Hardy and Trent Sherfield. That's it. They have five receivers on their roster. That's it. They have Justin Shorter as a sixth, but he's on IR. Like, if you can cover Stephon Diggs, I trust Sauce Gardner to be able to shut down Gabe Davis. Oh, and yeah. I think DJ Reed and Tony Adams collectively can cover Stephon Diggs enough to make the rest of the secondary be okay. You put sauce on Davis, you bracket Diggs, and I, I want to get your opinion before I get to this uh, and give my next point here, Matt, but there's only one other guy on this team you have to cover if you do that. Alan? D- Dalton Kincaid. Oh, can, oh, sorry. As far as receivers, <laughs> like the in only other guy you got to really yes, worry about. You gotta, yeah. In terms of cover defensively in pass coverage, Dalton yes. Kincaid, James Cook can be a, a threatening receiver. That's you know certainly an option, but there is there's ways that you can mitigate that. You know, to not be an explosive down the field ruin your day type of event. Like if the Bills want to dink and dunk to James Cook all game, and that's their only offense, that's going to be a lot harder. Dalton Kincaid is a weapon. Dalton Kincaid is a is a seriously, seriously talented rookie tight end that's basically going to be used like a receiver. I, I don't even think his snap breakdown percentage, I bet he's going to spend more time out wide than in line this year. And he's just going to be an extra target for them. I think Dalton Kincaid is how the Bills beat the Jets. If they can't cover him, if they can't find somebody to cover him, if he's too big for Michael Carter, if he's too quick for Jordan Whitehead, if he's way too fast for CJ Mosley and they have nobody else to cover him and they can't structure their coverage in a way to racket digs and let sauce shut down Gabe Davis, then I think the Bills passing game is going to have no problems and they're just going to be able to find explosive plays, let Allen do what he does best, you know, take their lumps with the Jets defensive line as it comes, but make enough explosive plays to make up for it. And it's going to be really hard to win this game. If they can find a way to cover Dalton Kincaid and they bracket the other two guys in the way that I think they will, I don't know how the Bills pass the ball. Uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time thinking of, of another way to do it either. Yeah, it's just going to be Cook and, and uh, Dawson Knox and, and, and Dalton Kincaid uh, in the middle. Uh, that's how teams beat us last year. I think we're a little bit more equipped this time around. Uh, I think uh, that who we have on, on it, since we've been doing a lot of big nickel, I think that big nickel is going to play a, a bigger impact uh, on these tight ends and uh, kind of shoring up the middle. 
whether it's Amos, uh, uh, whether it's Davis, uh, or whoever it is, uh, I think they're going to have a big responsibility of shutting down uh, these guys that we just mentioned. Um, and yeah, it could get away from us quickly, as it has many times in the past uh, when teams do attack the middle. Um, so we just have to really hope that they've learned, that they've turned that corner. Um, otherwise, yeah, it could be a long day, and Diggs is still going to get his wins. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, even if he's bracketed by uh, Reed and, and, and Adams. Uh, if, especially if you're if you're taking resources away from the middle with Adams uh, to to do that with Diggs, that's going to open things up even more uh, with uh, Kincaid uh, or Dawson Knox. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I I could definitely see that being as the 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 biggest struggle that our defense can can face or will face uh, on Monday night. Um, I, I, and yeah, other than that, in the past we've also been worried about Allen and his legs and what he can do just on his own. Uh, I'm a little less worried about that uh, than I am about Kincaid taking over the game. Uh, uh -huh. Just because uh, we, even last year, we showed that we the athleticism that we have on the edge uh, with JJ, with uh, Huff, with, with, with every single one of them, they're all athletic enough to really chase down uh, Allen when he gets his feet moving. Uh, and I also think that the safeties and linebackers are t have taken a step in the direction uh, to really clamp down on these mobile quarterbacks and and uh, screens. Uh, in the preseason, I saw something I haven't seen from the Jets defense in a while, which is so many like contact right at the at the catch point uh, on screens and little dump off. Uh, where before they would, you would see a screen and be like, "Oh, this guy's this is going to go for like sixteen or twenty or a touchdown." Yep. There's uh, nobody within twenty yards of of the three screen blockers leading out in front. Oh God, here we go again. Exactly. But now it seems like there's a whole mosh pit waiting. Uh, whether it was Amos or or Davis or Sherwood, uh, I I saw our guys flying to the ball very quickly, diagnosing everything very quickly. Uh, so if that transfers over. I am not worried about Cook out of the backfield so much. I'm not worried about Allen as a runner. And yeah, so it just goes back to what you were just saying. It's all about can they match up well against Kincaid? That's what's going to win or lose them the game, in my opinion. I think the offense has enough talent. The Jets offense has enough talent to take advantage of the weak interior uh, of the Buffalo Bills, put their linebackers through hell and make it a really, really tough outing and find easy yards, whether it's to Conklin, whether it's to running backs, whether it's to slot receivers, you know, going over the middle against zone. Uh, there, there's going to be ways to, to generate yards and hopefully points out for this offense. That's not my concern. Mm -hmm. My concern is that the Jets offense scores and the Jets defense can't cover Dalton Kincaid forcing them to strict uh, to change the structure of their coverage, give Diggs more one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and then Stephon Diggs starts coming alive, and the Bills offense keeps up. Because if the Bills can stay two-dimensional, and they don't feel forced to throw, forced to play catch-up, forced to look for the big play, they have a pretty good group of running backs. You know, James Cook is a solid player. We saw what he did last year, you know, explosive in his own right, just like his older brother that he's going to be playing against. Um, they have Damian Harris from the Patriots, who I think is one of the most underrated signings of the entire offseason, is Damian Harris to the Bills. All Damian Harris does is just run inside, run power and run inside zone, get like four yards a clip, sometimes break a tackle and score touchdowns in the red zone. And the Bills struggled to have a consistent runner that could run with power, get you know behind their pads, get in those tough yards at the end of the game when they really needed to grind out clock and not have Josh Allen running QB power to bleed clock out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th This is you know the guy that's going to do it in Damian Harris. They have Latavius Murray as a number three who's had success in the league before, is getting up there in age, definitely not the player he once was, but not the worst number three running back you could possibly think of to have in the league. They have some talent to be able to generate yards on offense with the run game and we know the Jets defense was good against the run last year I'm expecting similar results especially from what we've seen out of them so far in the preseason 
but they can still get caught out of position. They can still get caught on counter plays when they get too aggressive and they shoot the wrong gap. They can still have their linebackers, you know, come downhill too quickly and take the wrong gap and open up a cutback lane. There's a multitude of things that can happen that can make the run game harder to shut down in its entirety. And if the Bills feel like they have the time on the clock and there's, you know, tight enough of a game in terms of the score to where they don't have to be throwing, then I think they're going to want to look to run the ball. I think they're going to want to keep the Jets defense honest with the run. They're going to want to trick those linebackers into having play action. They're going to want to bring a safety down and, and again, change the structure of the coverage that the Jets want to run. But if the Jets offense has a lead and the defense can do enough to cover Kincaid to buy up some time throughout the game and keep that lead, then the Bills are going to be looking to throw. Then they're going to become one-dimensional. And this is where my last point comes in. You pass rush Josh Allen from the inside, not the outside. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this Bills offensive line, it makes double sense to do that. Deion Dawkins is a pretty dang good left tackle. You could do a heck of a lot worse at left tackle than Deion Dawkins for a lot of teams in the NFL. May not have had the most incredible year of his career last year, but still a solid player. Spencer Brown on the right side, incredibly, incredibly athletic. I remember a few years ago, Matt, he was one of our options for our uh, our War Room special um, when he was coming out of the draft that we ended up uh, having him as a possible pick for the Jets. Uh, 10 out of 10 RAS at offensive tackle as a mid-round pick for the Bills. Started last year, a whole bunch of games, played pretty well. Still an ascending player that I I think is going to be a a pretty tough matchup for whoever the Jets have. Even though their defensive line is great, it's not like Spencer Brown's a nobody. But then you look at the interior. You have Ryan Bates at right guard. Average to below average NFL you know, veteran. Mitch Morse at center. Signed a big free agency deal a handful of years ago, was one of the better setters in the league, has not been keeping that same track record for a while. It started to see his play slip as he gets older in age. And their left guard, Connor McGovern, no relation uh, to the Jets center that they signed in free agency from Dallas, is dealing with a knee injury right now with absolutely no update on whether he's going to play or practice or anything as we get close to week one. What about the knee? And that's where I was going to get to yep. is... The next guy up would be Osiris Torrance, who was my number one guard in this past draft uh, out of the University of Florida, but still a rookie player who hasn't been doing much practicing with the starters from everything that I've gathered, who would be thrust into a primetime Monday night football matchup against the Jets defensive line, especially the interior pass rushers that they have when Torrance is as good as he is, and he's a a rock solid player with a great anchor, great strength, great ability to to win at the point of attack and create movement up front. But he's not very fleet of foot. He's not very quick. And going against guys like Quinnen Williams or Quentin Jefferson or Michael Clemens when he gets aligned on the inside or JFM when he gets aligned on the inside, that's not really the matchup you want to see him go against. This interior can be had. This interior can be attacked. And with the way the Jets throw stunts and twists and send guys from different alignments, it can be even easier than just having guys win their one-on-one matchups. And what the freedom of that will allow you to do is if you can keep your edges on your edges, then they can play contained to the edges for Allen uh, scrambling, where they don't need to be the guys racking up sacks. They don't need to be the guys you know, looking for every amount to just smoke a tackle off rip and, and give Allen a lane to escape outside. They can kind of play a bit more passive. They can kind of contain him to the outside and keep him in the pocket because if Josh Allen wants to scramble and he wants to run straight ahead, that's fine. Then he's going to have CJ Mosley or Quincy Williams coming downhill full speed to beat him and not have to change direction to do so. So I'm, I think that's a much better situation for this Jets defense. Get out to a lead, cover Dalton Kincaid, let your interior rushers eat Josh Allen alive. And if he wants to scramble up the middle, make him pay for it and you win this game. Oh, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, I think the interior of our defense uh, is going to have a nice game, to say the least. I think uh, they match up well against who they have or who they might have. Uh, And it's just a matter of, you know, containing on the outside. Uh, Like you said, whether it's JJ, who's proven that he can do that against the Bills, against Allen, uh, chasing him down for that tackle for a loss. So I think we have the guys up front, uh, even through rotation, to be able to to kind of, you know, stand up to to this run game. Uh, Because outside of Allen and and the occasional uh, 
short yardage run with uh, uh, Damian Harris uh, or Cook using his uh, his speed and his agility. Uh, I think we have what it takes. I'm nobody on that run in that run game really scares me. Uh, I have that much confidence in our defensive line and our linebackers to be able to contain their run game. Uh, so, and it's really just going to put pr- more pressure on Allen to really attack us in the air. Uh, I think that's where they're going to make their money. Uh, and making them one dimensional like that is is a plus. Uh, we can we can focus on that. Definitely. We can we can mitigate that, even if they they do have some matchups that are favorable when it comes to K- with Kincaid in the middle. Uh, having the ability to shut down the run and forcing them to to exploit those kind of you know is a win for us. We can we can definitely uh, game plan for that. Yeah, this game is a great example of why you try and stockpile as much explosive offensive talent as possible. Because if you look at the Jets, if the Bills defense slows down Garrett Wilson, because like Stephon Diggs, I don't think it's ever going to be possible to completely and totally shut him down. But if they slow down Garrett Wilson, there's still three or four other guys that you could see going off and having a good game and and taking the game over for themselves and being the guy that that does a lot of the heavy lifting and not have to sit there and go, okay, they slow Garrett Wilson down. You know, that's going to be a real problem for us. If they slow Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall down, you know, then what do we do? Well, you have Dalvin Cook, you have Michael Carter, you have Tyler Conklin, you have Alan Lazard, you have Nicole Hardman, you know, you have other options that can come in and make plays. You look at the bills, you slow down Stefan Diggs, because again, you're not going to totally shut him down. You slow down Stefan Diggs, you shut down Gabe Davis with, with Sauce Gardner. And if you can cover Dalton Kincaid, there's basically nobody else you have to be seriously threatened about. If James Cook has to become the number one passing target of the Bills, the Jets defense did their job. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I have all the confidence in the world that they will. Uh, I think in years past, uh, I don't think they've ever really had our number that much. Uh, and I think we're just that much better now to be able to handle anything they throw at us. Uh, but they are still, like you said in the beginning, <laughs> one of the best offenses in the NFL. Uh, so nothing can be taken for granted. We can't chalk anything up as a, as re- remotely as like an automatic win at all. Uh, it's going to be a battle, tooth and nail, uh, offense and defense. Uh, and it's really going to be about who can exploit the, the weaknesses more and who can endure uh, the entire four quarters. Uh, and right now, I think we are in a position to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm leaning that way as well. Uh, what what you just said, I think, really hammers home the the theme of this game: endure. Who's going to endure throughout this game? Who's going to be able to do enough of what they want to do on both sides of the ball? Who's going to be able to outlast the other one? Because both teams are going to get their licks in. Both teams are going to make their plays. They're going to have good moments, bad moments. You know, these are two very, very talented teams in a tough division rivalry in a primetime environment in a stadium that's going to be a a zoo isn't a strong enough of a word for for how MetLife is going to be on Monday night. This is going to be a dogfight. It's going to be a slugfest. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You, you, You have to be willing to play the long game. You have to be willing to take your opportunities when they're there. You can't be looking for the big play right off the bat. I know the, the Aaron Rodgers bomb to Garrett Wilson first play of the game is going to get the crowd, you know, jumping out of their absolute skin, but that's not going to win you this game. And would you rather be excited in the first quarter or happy driving home at the end of the fourth? 